Hello there, everybody. Good morning, good morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. Oh, for the next seven-ish minutes or so, uh, as we talk together here, seven minutes in the morning. How you doing this morning? So, I am uh, going to make one quick adjustment here. Y'all bear with me. As you get here, as you check in, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know that you're here. Always enjoy... Um, seeing who stops in every morning, saying hi to everybody as they get here. So please be sure to do that. Let me know that you're here so I can. It also does a great thing for you. It lets Facebook know that you're interested in the comments, which is where all the gold happens in uh, in our conversations here every morning. So whether you're watching live or watching on the replay, be sure and drop a comment down there. Say hi. Let me know that you're here. If you happen to be listening on your podcast app, you can join our conversation live every morning on Facebook. Go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That gets you to the right place. And I'm going to put, hey, put that little graphic up there also. All right, so yesterday we started talking about uh, relationships and the value of relationships to your business. Hmm, interesting. Um, had some some good conversation starters in the comments yesterday, so I hope we get some more of those uh, as we go. So here's the basic premise, right? And, and this is where I think we miss. And this this was kind of the uh, hence the the title for today: adding value uh, through relationships. Just I mean I've said this a hundred thousand times probably. If you don't have customers, you don't have a business. A customer relationship is still a relationship. There is a value exchange going on there. How are you creating value for the people around you? That was the question that I left you with yesterday. And um, so I'd be interested, so those of you that are hopping in, good morning, Joe, Jeremy, Keith. If you thought about that question yesterday, how can I add value to the people around me today? Um, and you're willing to share, I'd love to hear some of the, the ways that you came up with, how you add value to the people around you. Because at the end of the day, right, our, I, my usual admonition is our job is to solve problems for other people at a profit, right? But in order to do that, there has there's a, a prerequisite of having a relationship with those people, so that you have the opportunity to let them know that you have a solution. But we're so, I don't know, trained, conditioned maybe, to think that it's, that's not a relationship. And maybe it's because of the way we look as consumers, the way we look at producers. You ever thought about that? This is a, it's the kind of question I like to, to, um, to throw out every once in a while. When we are a producer and we are having difficulty understanding a creator producer and we're having difficulty understanding why other people won't consume what we have created, it's because we forget that they look at it through an unbiased eye. All right, so I'm getting off in the weeds a little bit. Let me explain what I mean. In a retail facility, right, very often the owner comes in through the back door, unlocks the back door, comes in, opens up, and the very last thing they do is walk out and open the front door. If they never come into their facility through the front door, then they never see what the customer sees. They don't hear, they don't smell, they don't have the same experience. And so they have a completely biased view of, well, I'm, I'm looking at it from back here and everything looks great. We'll turn around and look at it from the other direction, right? You may have noticed over the last couple of days, I've been adding different thumbnails to the videos when they go up on YouTube or even here on Facebook. That's because of some feedback that I got from that unbiased point of view that's coming in from the other direction. We'll make it a little easier to get noticed, hopefully, right? So every once in a while, you have to take that point of view. And so the question then becomes, when, 
when you're thinking about relationships, how to add value, how does that person think you add value? Right? Not just the way that you are willing to give it, but the way that, that they want to receive it. Another way to think about it is if you have a team, if you have employees, the go-to reward for anybody that does anything great is a raise or money or bonus. It might not be what they want. Have you ever thought about it that way? I worked for a company one time and the, the go-to reward, if you did something good, was to give you the employee of the month uh, reward, which put your name on a little, um, you know, stick on engraved thingy on the plaque and then you got the front parking space, right? <clears throat> but a lot of the people didn't want the front parking space. <clears throat> Excuse me. They didn't want the front parking space because then everybody could see what time they got there and what time they left. So it wasn't much of a reward, right? Think about it in the same way. If you were trying to add value to somebody else, what would they consider valuable? And now here's the even better question. I bet Joe's got a great answer for this. How do you find out what they considered to be valuable? Right? If we just assume, and this is the same case just like with paying employees more, you assume that one thing is what they consider valuable, maybe because it's what you consider most valuable, maybe it's because just Traditionally, that's what it's been, right? But without, yeah, there he goes. Joe's got a good comment going on there. <laughs> uh, without actually asking, probing, trying to find out what's valuable, how are you going to give them what they truly believe is valuable? All right, so let's, oh, okay, good stuff going on down here. Keith says, being there for the family when needed, that's the way to add value around people. That's a pretty good one, Keith. I agree with that one. Joe says, actions that are beneficial are a stronger representation of a true relationship. Managing the relationship to keep it at a professional level is the more difficult task. So that's true. A stronger, that are beneficial are a stronger representation of the relationship. So it's always, I mean, Gary Vee put out a book, I don't know, a couple of years ago now, Jab, 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 Right Hook, which was really making the point, give, 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 then ask. Three times, or might, might have been four. No, I think it was three. Jab, 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 Right Hook. His point was you got to give three times, add value three times before you can ask anything of that person, right? Create that beneficial relationship. All right, Jeremy says, simple. I show them how I save money by using existing programs to switch their reliance from grid-supplied energy to solar-provided energy. Fantastic. That is, that's a, I'm sorry, I got distracted there. That's a fantastic way to go, to go <coughs> sorry, to go about that, Jeremy. So, one of the things that, I mean, I would take that and make this suggestion to you. And this is one of the things I do with people when I'm helping them tweak their introductions. Right? Is give that kind of explanation, that kind of pitch in the first sentence or two. And then give them an opportunity to reply. And it's like, hmm, well, how do you do that? And this one is worded, um, this one's worded pretty well. Save money using existing programs to switch your reliance from grid supplied energy. Right. Oh, well, how do you do that? Or isn't that expensive? If they ask you a question, that's a that's a, an, an opening into a longer conversation. They kind of cock their head to the side and say, oh, yeah, that's nice. And they really don't want to hear anymore. Right. And for me, those are the people that I just said, OK, cool. I'm not wasting my emotional energy and breath on you. Right. You'll come back to me at some point. Awesome. Those are good. Asking quality questions. There's Joe's answer to my question. Ask quality questions, especially the ones that no one else asked, is a key component to finding the underlying need. You ever notice when you go buy go to buy a car, the guy who's supposed to be or gal that's supposed to be showing you the car, the right car for you, they start with a lot of questions. I mean, like that, 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 that. All oh, these questions, man. Why are they doing that? 
They're trying to find out what you, what you believe your need is. Because my perceived need is far more important than anything else. And then they, they will highlight how each vehicle addresses that perceived need. So how do you, so back to that whole looking at your business through uh, the customer's eye, how do you do that with, with your work? Now your work, I mean, we've talked about work before. Work is just the net value that you leave. Doesn't necessarily have to be your job or a business, but when you are talking about your work, how do you do that? How do you, do you have questions built into your conversation? So here's a great example for Jeremy and Joe might have a good suggestion here too. Uh, Jeremy, I'm, and I'm kind of, I'm not picking on you, Jeremy, I'm highlighting today. <laughs> uh, so how can you, so Jeremy, the, how can you work a question into this to, to open up that channel of communication back to you, right? I mean, a simple one and not a very deep one is, does that sound good to you? Is that something you would be interested in? A, a deeper opening, a, uh, a one that's going to generate more engagement might be, um, if you could save half on your utility bills, or if you could eliminate your utility bills, what would you do with that money? Something along those lines, right? Something that's going to be more than a yes or no answer. Um, but, you know, that sort of thing. In that way, you give them an opportunity you, you, you get them to start talking, right? And then it's in that conversation that you find out what the true value is. They're not going to tell you. You have to find it. Quality question. All right. All right. Well, that's it for today. We're going to wrap it up here. We're, uh, well, 12 minutes already. I'm going to have to change the name of the show if I keep going long like this. I hope this has been valuable to you. If it has... Be sure to tag somebody in the comments or share this video either on your uh, page, out to your network, however you do that. Uh, that would be awesome because the more people that we get involved, the more great comments and feedback we can include and the more questions we can ask. And I'm, I'm totally on board with taking a question, a statement like Jeremy's today and, and highlighting them and spotlighting them uh, to help the other people that watch the show. Uh, throughout the day. We do have an, um, oh, excuse me, we might have, I don't know, several hundred a day, depending on the show and the topic. We'll have a lot of people watch the show throughout the day. Now, it is Tuesday, that normally means talk radio for entrepreneurs, but today we are airing a pre-recorded episode that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago with Amy Eskridge Pettigrew. You had the opportunity to watch that as we were recording it live. I'll repost that around 8 o'clock uh, out to the feed so you can watch that uh, if you didn't have a chance to watch it then. So, uh, no live show, but there will be a show for Talk Radio for Entrepreneurs coming up at 8 o'clock. So tune in for that. If you didn't get to watch us while we were doing that live, watch the replay. It's awesome stuff. And one of the bonuses of watching it like this, it'll only be about 30 minutes long. You don't have to watch for the whole hour. All right. Uh, all right, Jeremy. Joe's got some good, some good, a good comment down there for you. You should read that take that to heart. I'm going to wrap it up. I'll be back here again tomorrow with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. You guys take care. I'll talk to you then. <laughs>